you know. Right, so you might have heard about longitudinal waves, right? So in that what happens? The particles are moving parallel to the velocity of the wave. Fine? Okay? Please write down the particles be below longitudinal wave, please write down the particles move along the direction of the velocity. Parallel. Parallel to the direction of the velocity of the wave. Now here don't uh, don't assume parallel means that if, if velocity is like this it can move only that way. Particles are moving, if velocity is like this particle can do like that. It can go anti-parallel also. So by, by when I say parallel I mean along that line the particles can move. Are you getting it? Particles need not go just parallel to the velocity of the wave. Okay, so you should in fact write the particles move along the line of velocity of the wave because it can go in opposite direction also. Got it? Okay, so uh, by the way, uh, I forgot to mention one thing. When we talked about the transverse wave, particles are going up and then they are going down also. The same particles are just oscillating up and down, a periodic motion. Got it? A particle is doing periodic motion like this when the wave is going like that, so it's a transverse wave. In the longitudinal wave, the particles are doing periodic motion like this and wave is going like that. Ha have you seen such, such thing, longitudinal wave, have you ever seen? Sound is a longitudinal wave, but have you seen longitudinal wave? No, C waves are the, the C. The, the, there are the two, two kinds of wave in the water. On the surface of water, there will be always transverse wave. But if you go inside the water, it will be longitudinal. Uh, sir, what if it is slinky forward? Slinky, have, have you seen? Yes, sir. Okay, so if... Do you still play with it? My daughter plays with it. Do you still play with it? So if it's a big, big thing, a spring like thing. You have seen it? Yes, sir. Okay. You might be still playing with it right now. Alright. Listen. So when you move this end like that, when you move that end like this, what do you think will happen? The pulse will get created, the one portion will get compressed. This portion will get compressed. And that compression will move forward. You are, you are understand? It will do like this. Okay? So it is difficult to visualize longitudinal wave because you don't see it. You, do, you don't see frequently. But long, uh, the transfer wave you see regularly. And this kind of example I think you can visualize. I sent some videos also longitudinal wave. You can see. And the most common example of longitudinal wave is sound. Okay, please write down sound is a longitudinal wave. And that is the beginning of this chapter called sound. Okay. Sound is a longitudinal wave. Any doubts? You know what is the process of you speaking? How are we able to speak? There are vocal cords that create vibration. So what will happen due to that vibration? You are disturbing the medium. The air particles around get disturbed. So what will happen? Listen here guys. Sound will get compressed. Okay? Now, listen here. Not sound, sorry. The air particle will get compressed. Due to vibration, air particles suppose get compressed. So pressure here will be more now. Wherever air get compressed, pressure will be more. And pressure nearby is lower. So now what will happen? The, the pressure will get released. So it will push the particles which, are, which have lesser pressure. 
So when it pushes, wherever it was lesser pressure now becomes more pressure. So it will push it further. So that is the process of you transferring the sound from your vocal cord to some other place. Okay, this is simply, simply this is what it is. So if I reduce the number of molecules or number of air molecules in the room, what will happen? Then we will not be able to speak that clearly. Sound will become lesser in the, the energy of the sound will become lesser. You understand? The vibration is big. The energy of the sound is because of the vibration of the air particles. If I reduce air particles, the energy will go down or not? So your sound level will go down. If I completely remove the air particles, you will not be able to speak itself. Because there is because there is no medium. There is no medium. Are you getting it? Have you ever tried uh, taking helium inside and then tried speaking? Huh? Yeah, right, right? So the, the, the pitch and quality of sound completely changes. Okay? So you may think that you, you sound like this or you sound like that. It is because of the surrounding air molecule or air particles. If I change the particles rather than nitrogen oxygen, if I put a helium here, your, your sound changes completely. So it is not your sound. It is a combination of how your vocal cord vibrate and what is there in the medium. Huh. So that helium volume where they they suck it. So that is does that like like it's not really low in the source. Is that why the No no sit down. See that's it stay near the whole source that's that kind of sound. Are you worried about your health because that's why you're just talking about why the sound? Okay, sit down. Sit down. See, when I'm like this in here, it is it is as simple as I am trying to apply some force on heavy mass and trying to shake it and then I am applying on the lighter mass and trying to shake it. So it is exactly like that. So when you put it, put your sound on helium, helium molecules will vibrate in a different manner. Nitrogen and oxygen will vibrate in a different manner. Your vocal cord will apply the same amount of force. Right? Does it make sense? Okay. So this is what the longitudinal wave is about and sound is a longitudinal wave. Okay? Now write down sound again. Okay. Don't stop. Please write down characteristic of characteristic of a sound wave. Okay, so right now, characteristic of sound wave. What? What does it mean? Characteristic means what? Trying to define something. Features. Okay, trying to define something. Okay, so suppose I am trying to define the motion of an object. What other thing I need to know? Uniform or non-uniform. Uniform or non-uniform. Then what else? Suppose it is constant acceleration. Okay. Suppose this constant acceleration, what are the things you need to know to tell completely about the motion? State. Huh? It's state. It's How it moves, straight line, curve line. It's a constant acceleration. So what, what are the things you need to know? Amplitude. How about kinematics? That's not the initial I need to know initial velocity. Yes or no? What else? I need to know mass, so mass you can say. What is acceleration? So if you tell me initial velocity and acceleration and what is and the initial location also. So I was talking about suppose I need to describe motion. I need to know initial velocity, acceleration and initial position. Once you tell me that, 
I can tell you whatever you can ask about what will happen after this time, how much is the velocity after this much displacement, what will be the final location of a particle, I can answer everything. So I have described the motion by just knowing these three things. Similarly, I want to describe about the sound waves. So what all things I should know better what is the characteristic of a wave. So please do not correlate wave with a mass. You can't use equation of motion or kinematics just like that when it comes to waves. Fine, wave is a different kind of thing. Okay, so it is not a mass. It's a it's an energy that is transmitted from one position to the other position. Okay, so please write down three characteristic of the sound: frequency, frequency. Amplitude and speed. Speed. If you if you tell if you tell me frequency, I can tell you time period. Frequency is one by time period only. Huh? If you know frequency and speed, I can I you know you know wavelength also. They are related, so we will talk about that. Every other thing you are related to each other. Fine? Okay? Now why it says speed? Why not velocity? Because velocity contains more information. Velocity will tell you direction also. But it, it doesn't say velocity. It says speed. Speed will give you lesser information. So it says that I don't need to know which direction the wave is going. What is the reason? Correct. So when when I'm speaking, the wave is traveling in every direction. Are you getting it? Depending on where the wave travels on a medium, depending on where is the medium, sound will travel there. Are you getting it? So similarly, or if you take a transfer for example, if you tie your string in such a way that string turns like that using pulley or something, if you create a pulse here, the transfer wave will travel like that only. It will, it will follow the medium. It will not have its own independent direction of motion. Fine, so that is why we are not saying velocity, we are saying speed. Okay, so now let us take one by one these three things and try to understand more about it, how to find out these things. Okay. First, we we'll talk about frequency. But when you hear the term frequency, what comes in your mind? What does it mean? What it is? Huh? No, that see, pitch is a technical word. We haven't yet introduced that. Huh? How often do you hear that? Correct. Sit down. So how often? How many times one event happens? That is the count. Count of how many times something happens. Is frequency should be the frequency actually. Now, when I say count of how many times something happens, it should be having some fixed duration. How many times something happens in one hour is different from how many times same thing happens in two hours. So just to make sure that we need when we compare, we are comparing properly. We say that frequency is number of times event happens in one second. Got it? Please write down. The frequency is number of number of oscillations. Number of oscillations per unit time. Number of oscillations per unit time is frequency. Which oscillation I am talking about here? So, oscillation of the oscillation of the particles. Particles are oscillating like that. 
Now tell me how much is one full complete oscillation? Particle? Suppose this. Suppose this is a particle. This is where it was initially. It goes here between A and B oscillates. So can you tell me what is the one complete oscillation? B to A and back to B. Correct. So suppose you start from O, you go like this, then go back and then come. That's also that is also one complete oscillation. Which is initial and final position should be the same. Not that. Initial position will be same like that also, right? But the problem is position is same, but velocity is not same. Everything should repeat. Position should repeat, velocity should repeat, if, if acceleration is there, acceleration should also repeat. Then only it is one complete time period. So that is why it has to go there and come back and now velocity also repeats. Same direction of velocity now, whatever it was up there. So that is why one complete oscillation is that when everything repeats, not only just position. Okay? So you count the number of oscillations in one second, that is the frequency of a wave. Fine. Now there is a somewhat set time period. Please write down time period. What do you think time period is? Time taken to complete one oscillation. Please write down time taken. Time taken to complete one oscillation. Is the time period? of oscillation is the time period of oscillation. So if time period to complete one oscillation is t second, how many oscillations in one second? Does it make sense? In t seconds, one oscillation, so in one second, one by t oscillations. Okay? So one by t is frequency. Frequency is written as f. F is 1 by t. Okay. Alright. Is this clear to all of you? Does it make sense to now? Okay. Now uh, it is very difficult to draw a longitudinal wave every time. Because I have to show that okay, here compression is there, here compression air fraction is there. So it is difficult. So rather than drawing the wave, we draw the variation of pressure of the wave. Okay? So this is what we do. Suppose this is the wave, the variation of pressure, this is how we draw. This, this corresponds to that wave. So both of this wave will have same characteristic because pressure will change according to how much is the compression or refraction. So the characteristic of this will be the characteristic of that as well. So when I say time period, time period of both will be same. Variation of pressure will also will have same time period as variation in the motion of the particles and the frequency also. Fine? But it is easy to draw this, isn't it? And it is easy to visualize this. When I say, when I see this, the picture of transverse wave come in our mind. So it is easier to say that these are the uh, you know crest, these are the curves, so like that I can deal with it in a much better fashion. So that is why even though it is sound which is like this, I will study it as if it is a pressure wave. Okay? Now we have written time period is time period of oscillation of the wave, oscillation of the particle. But we are studying waves. So where is wave in it? The movement of the particle is Correct. But you are defining time period of wave as if it is time period of oscillation. You have to talk about, okay, here is a wave. In this much time, something wave does. That should be a time period because we are talking about waves. Okay? Right? So, how to uh, talk about No, no. In terms of waves, how do you say what is the time period? How can we find out? Wavelength is a length. I am talking about time period. Time period is 
Suppose you have put a here it is an a thing here. Here suppose this crest passes. When crest number one passes this thing, t equal to zero. When crest number two passes, whatever the time period between two consecutive passes of the crest, that is the time period that matches with the oscillation frequency. Are you getting it? So time taken by uh, time taken for the consecutive passes of the crest is the time period. You can write like that also. This write down time period is also time period of a wave is also the time taken time taken to pass two consecutive crests or troughs. Two consecutive crests or troughs. Right? Uh, have you un uh, understood this thing? So we have defined time period by looking at wave, not by looking at the particles now. But you will look at the particle also tell about time period. But this this is much better way of visualizing the time period. Okay? Now can you tell frequency with respect to wave? We have talked about time period with respect to wave. Can you tell how do you define frequency with respect to wave? The number of times that two consecutive stress or drop pass. Number of times two consecutive drop will pass only once only, right? One drop will pass only once through this obstacle. Point number one will not come back and then again pass, right? It will just pass and go away. So, but then you are closer to what it is. Number of? Number of times the wave is? Now that we are talking in terms of uh, oscillation of the particle. Right? Just look at the wave. Wave is moving forward like this. With respect to wave, can I define the frequency? It will help me visualize it in a better way. Anyone? Time period of oscillation. Time period of wave is what? Time taken for two consecutive crests to pass. So frequency is in one second. How many crest passes? Please write down frequency. Frequency of a wave is in one second. How many crest or trough passes? Okay. So we have defined the time period and frequency with respect to with respect to wave and with respect to the particles of the medium, both ways. Getting it? Fine? Making sense? So this is frequency and time period.